My brothers and my sisters, you know, every night when I go to sleep and I lay down on my bed, two thoughts bother me. The one thought I always have every night that tonight Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me this opportunity that I am sleeping on my comfortable bed above the ground. It's a very good possibility that tomorrow I may be sleeping six feet under the ground in a dark room where there is no pillow, there is no mattress, there is no heating and air conditioning system. The second thought bothers me every night, then I, whenever I will be presented in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah is going to ask me that I gave you 60 years of age, 40 years of age, 30, 70, 80, what you did. So I have no excuse to present to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day that Ya Allah, you did not give me enough time or you did not give me enough resources. Wallahi, every night when we go to bed, if we think what is going to happen tomorrow, because our family will not hold on to our body for very long. Everybody will rush as soon as your soul is gone from your body, then let him take and bury. Today, inshallah, in my khutbah, I'm going to share with you a few thoughts that what exactly we can do to reach to the goal of our life. We have only one purpose, only one goal in our life, and that is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when you and me, we go from this dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call that you have succeeded. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbi kiradiyatam mardiya fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati. That is the goal, the mission we all have. The very last ayah of Surah Al-An'am that I have read in front of you in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that whatever we have given you, the circle around you, the health, the wealth, life, your family, your friends, whatever is accessible to you, what is, is, is in your reach, your imtahan, your test, your destiny, your jannah, your jahannam, your success, your failure, everything will depend on all those things you are given access to. Allah is not going to ask you and me about things which were not accessible to me, which were not in my reach, which were out of my capacity, out of my control. No. What Allah has given you and me, the opportunities, and all that, that is our test and imtahan, my brothers and my sisters. You know, we all spend so much time and so much energy to make the house of this dunya beautiful. I see, I, I'm included in that, that how much energy and time and wealth and health we spend to make the house of this dunya beautiful. I want to have two-story house with so many bedrooms, with so many bathrooms, with so many luxuries in my house. I import things from China. I import things from you know different countries. I want to buy the best thing. And when I built my house, I ask my friends and show them, look at my house this beautiful house that I have built for myself. Wallahi, how much time do we spend to build the house of this dunya beautiful? And we should ask ourselves, 
that how much time do we spend for the house that we are going to live forever this house that we are building we may not even be able to live for very long i know many friends i know many friends they build their house of this dunya beautiful but allah did not allow them even to live in that house for one day no comparison my brothers and my sisters we need to wake up i don't mind that we should spend time and energy and wealth to build the house of this dunya as comfortable as we could but wallahi the house of that dunya our real house where we are going to live forever there is no exit from there how much time should we spend to build that house you know one of the ways that we can do some good deeds in this dunya and one of the easy way allah has provided us many easy ways to please allah subhanahu wa taala to get succeeded to be successful in this dunya one is to be servant of allah subhanahu wa taala loyal obedient servant of allah subhanahu wa taala do whatever allah subhanahu wa taala has asked you to do one of the thing which we neglect if you see a muslim history you know our fall our zawal our downfall has happened in two steps the very first step was when our practicing muslims going for five time prayer and waking up for tahajjud our conscious muslim they focused just on ibadat i will take care of my salah i will take care of my som i will take care of my zakat and they ignored the humanity they didn't care, care about the people living around them their were main focus was just how i can have a spiritual uplifting by focusing on my ibadat that was the first downfall of us as a ummah the second downfall happened when our relationship with allah subhanahu wa taala became just like official relationship superficial relationship just lip service just like a robot that you come in masjid you pray you read quran you do some lip service and then you feel like you are done and after that we got three groups of muslim one group said you know we are going to just focus on ibadat and let's forget about the humanity the second group became we will just focus on humanity you know serving humans is the best thing if our salah we are lazy in that if we don't do any ibadat if we go go for friday prayer if we don't read quran that's fine as long as we take care of the creation of allah subhanahu wa taala this was another extreme that forget about ibadat let's just focus on serving humanity and this is the goal for jannah the third group was in the middle my brothers and my sisters inshallah today i am going to talk to you that what importance allah subhanahu wa taala has given a human being living around us what can i do to attain the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa taala by serving humanity yes i will take care of my ibadat as well as a modest muslim but at the same time today i want to learn you know this thought came in my mind when allah subhanahu wa taala if you remember i shared one story that one muhaddis was given jannah was forgiven just because he had given chance to a fly to sit on the tip of his pen to crunch his thrust to drink some out of that ink so that fly can feel satisfied that he took care of the creation of allah subhanahu wa taala allah subhanahu wa taala had forgiven him not because he was muhaddis because he took care of one of his creation and we all have heard those famous ahadith 
that Allah has forgiven one lady who was not practicing Muslima, but she took care of a cat. We know the story of dog, we know the story of cats. I was asking myself, imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive somebody by taking care of his other creations, what about human being who is Ashraful Makhlukat, who is the highest creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you and me will take care of other human being, imagine the reward of that. What reward we will get. So inshallah in next 15-20 minutes I have, I want to focus on that. A hadith, one hadith after another. Prophet ﷺ says that if you provide ease to your fellow human being in this dunya, Allah will provide ease for you. If you become reason of bringing a smile on a face of your Muslim brother and sister in this dunya, Allah will take care of you. If you have given loan to somebody and if you take care of it and you go easy on him, if he is going through hardship, Allah will make it easy for you on that day when you will need Allah the most. The hadith in which Prophet Sassam says, the, what is the reward of a mu'min? When he gives, he gives more than the due share. But when he is receiving his part, he compromises on less than his haqq. What about that hadith in which Prophet ﷺ says that if you have given a loan to somebody and he is going through a hardship and you go hard on him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to squish your grave because you have bothered his creation when he was going through hardship. And look at the uswa of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. He is on musalla. Iqama is called already. Salah is about to start, but if somebody comes with needs, Prophet will leave his Salah to fulfill the need of that person. Is this the same religion that you and me, we practice in this dunya, my brothers and my sisters? Wallahi, if I sh share with you a very simple concept, if you are coming towards a masjid, and Iqama time is almost there and you see a little child running towards the water and there is a possibility he may fall in that water and drown. As a Muslim, my responsibility is to leave the Salah and go and save that life. This is Islam. When it comes to human being, this is our role, this is our kirdar, this is our mamla should be. My brothers and my sisters, you know, before I will go in further detail, there are few things that I want you and me to do in our life. You know, this all concept doesn't come like a magic that you have a button you can turn on and turn off. We have to develop that personality, the personality which is a balanced personality. Personality which can take care of his ibadat, on one end, and the hukuk of ibadullah, hukuk of human being on the other end. The first requirement for that is that we should bring istighfar in our life in abundance. People who enjoy when they do istighfar, in one of my khutbah I have told you the difference between istighfar and tawbah. Istighfar is a journal dua. Journal forgiveness. You can ask for istighfar for even for other human beings, other fellow Muslims. But tawbah is very specific just for you, for certain sins you have done. So the first thing which I will advise myself and you get in this habit of asking istighfar, forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and enjoying it. One of my sheikh was one day saying that you enjoy istighfar and you feel istighfar, you drown in istighfar so much that on your back you feel like that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his hand 
is padding you, is giving you shabash, is appreciating your istighfar. You feel that padding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on your back. The second habit we have to get in, that is tawbah. My brothers and my sisters, let me tell you one thing. The joy and happiness we can get from Toba, no but nothing in this world, no bounty of this world, no name of this world can bring that sakina, that happiness, and that pleasure for you, what you can get through Toba. Wallahi, just go and raise your hand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and share some tears. See how you feel, how light you feel, how happy you feel. You know, you can experience that because when we go Kaaba, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us this opportunity that we can go again and again and visit house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in Kaaba, when you are sitting there and waiting for Salah, Wallahi, that is the time that you are not worried about anything. You are just focusing your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many times you will experience when you raise your hand for Toba and when you come out of Kaaba, you feel like so light that all the worries are gone. The things I was worried about, everything is gone. Toba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us that tool to feel the air. Feel the pleasure of Jannah in this dunya. Wallahi, the lumps, the air, the wind coming from Jannah, you can feel in this dunya through Tawbah. That when you raise your hand. The third thing which is the focus of my khutbah today is taking care of human beings, other fellow human beings with empathy. Urdu mein hum kehte hain khair khwahi, hum dardi. With humility and empathy. You don't want to be boss of them. You don't want to be in charge of them. You don't want to control their life. No. You want to help your fellow human being with empathy. Empathy is that you can feel their pain. You can see yourself in their shoes. And you can feel that how they are suffering. That I want to help. That whatever I can do. If I can give my shoulder through few words or by giving some financial support or giving them some suggestions, I should do that, my brothers and my sisters. But as I said, not to become their in charge, not to show them any favor, rather with empathy and support. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to practice this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way it should be. Last week, you know, I was reading one newspaper from one of the Arab country. And in that newspaper, they were complaining. Look at the double standard of the Europe. What is happening in Ukraine when these Ukrainians are coming to Romania or Poland or these countries, see how they are welcoming them. And when Syrian Muslims were going there, what was the treatment they were receiving? Listen to me. I was shocked when I read that news from that Arab newspaper. I said to myself, shame on us as a Muslim. Shame on us as a Muslim. What we did to our Muslim brothers and sisters. When these Syrian brothers and sisters, they were leaving their country, what we did for them as a Muslim. We all failed, most of us failed to fulfill our responsibility. With what face I can complain to European country or anybody else? I travel all around the world. Wallahi, I have seen with my own eyes and I have, hear, I have heard with my own ears our own Muslim brothers complaining about these brothers and sisters coming from Syria. It's not just Syria. Look what we do with Palestinians. What we did with Iraqi people when they were migrating out. You know, when Afghan people were coming to Pakistan, I will give credit to Pakistan. I will give credit to Pakistan. Yes, there were many people in Pakistan, they were complaining, but still, 
Pakistan was the only country took care of so many million Afghans in Pakistan. But wallahi, we have no right to complain to Europe. We should blame ourselves that we did not. We had all the money. These Gulf countries, they have so much money. They can buy aeroplane of $500 million, just one aeroplane. They can buy a boat and ship for $500 million. What about these refugees, Muslim refugees, when they were coming, who was there to help? When I, with my family, went to one of the camps of refugees, I heard one of the security guards there, who was not refugee, when I asked him that I want to go inside and help these brothers and sisters, he says, you know, brother, I need more, more help than these brothers and sisters. I was asking myself, brother, they left their house. Whatever, they, they are not beggars. They were forced to leave their country. Wallahi, Allah provides these opportunities to us. And then we have to, discipline, we have to give the example. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will share in two minutes this story of Bishar al-Hafi. Bishar al-Hafi I mentioned, Rahmatullah alayhi, last time as well. Bishar al-Hafi used to come for Friday prayer and will leave as soon as Imam says salam. There was one merchant, you know, in, in that gathering. He was bothered by Bishar al-Hafi that what kind of Muslim he is. As soon as salam and he leaves, he flies out of masjid. He should stay, pray nafil and this and that. One day, that merchant decided to follow Bishar al-Hafi, rahmatullah alayhi. And he went after him. He saw that whenever after Salam he left the masjid, he goes to this place, this hotel, to buy some bread. So this merchant is thinking in his mind, oh, Bishar maybe he gets hungry right after Salah, so he wants to go and eat. Then he follows him, and Bishar is going in a jungle, in desert. And this merchant is after him, oh, maybe he wants to hide from people. You know, we become judgmental about people. Same attitude. Maybe he wants to go in desert and eat. And he follows and then he sees Bishar going in a tent. And this merchant is looking inside the tent. When Bishar reaches inside the tent, he is trying to feed a one old paralyzed man and asking him that I apologize to you. Every Friday I get late to bring lunch for you because of my Juma Salah. This merchant is surprised, you know, this man about whom I was thinking that he leaves Friday prayer for his personal gain. And then this old man who was paralyzed Asking Bishar al-Hafi, Bishar, you are doing this for me for last 14 years. How long you are going to take care of me? Look at the answer of Bishar al-Hafi. That is the focus of my khutbah today. He says, Bishar, Bishar says to that man, listen, whatever muqam and status Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me in this dunya is not because of my ibadat is not because of my salah, is not because of my Quran. The status and muqam Allah has given me in this dunya is because I serve people like you. And when Bishar comes out, this merchant touches his feet and says, you know, I want to do bath on your hand, Bishar. And Bishar puts the condition, I am, there is a one condition, and the condition is that you will not tell anybody what you have seen today. Allah.